I got this card on eBay for $90. It sold out while I was making this video. Now, the cheapest one is $200. Let's see if it was worth it on Linux. I also want to test this card's AI chops, but that's for another video. AMD GPUs are usually pretty plug and play on Linux, so I'm curious. The G Pro X080, or X080, was a crypto mining card released back in 2021, but under the hood, or shroud, it's Navi 22 with 10 gigs of VRAM. Basically, a RX 6700, no bloody X or T. RX 6700s still go for $230 to $250. Unlike a lot of mining GPUs, this one has active cooling in the form of a Sapphire Pulse dual fan cooler, and it runs on PCIe X16. The catch? No video outputs. You'll need an iGPU or a second card for display out. And during testing, I found it doesn't report much to Mango HUD. That may be fixable if you flash it with a RX 6700 vBIOS. Here are the specs of my system on screen. I'll be testing everything at 1440p, so let's see what this little mining relic can do on Linux. Let's start off with Borderlands 3. This six-year-old game defaulted to DX11, and I wasn't able to switch to DX12 slash VKD3D. I ran Borderlands 3 at the high preset, and honestly, the visuals were pretty stunning for a card you can find for under $100. In a 3 minute slice early in the game, the X080 yielded an average of about 80 frames per second, a 1% low of 53.3 and a 0.1% low of 22.7 frames per second. On paper, those low of jank, but in practice the gameplay felt stable. For a budget GPU like this, Borderlands 3 is very playable and, at least in my humble opinion, looks fantastic. Next up is Control Ultimate Edition. The game defaulted to DX12 and I left it there, running at the high preset. I tested it two ways, raster only with pre-compiled shaders like it's 1995, and then with ray tracing enabled. In raster mode, the X080 averaged 50.5 frames per second, with 1% lows around 30 frames per second, and 0.1% lows dipping to 11. Turning on ray tracing made things fall apart. Performance dropped to an average of 25 frames per second, 1% lows of 18, and 0.1% lows at 12.5. But more than the frame rate, the visuals just weren't there. I didn't see real reflections, and the image looked blurry, almost like the shaders weren't fully implemented. Ray tracing wasn't really RDNA 2's strong suite, and AMD didn't really push ray tracing until RDNA 3 and 4. Moving on to GTA 5 Enhanced Edition, visuals were set to the high preset and the game started in DX12 mode and I stuck with that. I thought again that performance was impressive for what's now a decade old title that still has a tendency to push PC hardware to its limit. And the objective data showed that the game averaged 96.1 frames per second on the X080, 1% lows of 56.2 frames per second and 0.1% lows of exactly 30 frames per second. Again, things seem pretty smooth, even if the CPU utilization on a pretty powerful 13th gen Intel Core CPU was a bit concerning. Shifting gears from a decade-old sandbox to a more recent one that's known to be brutal on PC hardware, let's see how Horizon Zero Dawn performs. I set it to the high preset, with FXAA enabled. Visually, things look good, but there's some split-second jank. Textures and objects sometimes loaded in late, and shaders hesitated before locking down the right shadow levels. That could just be quirks of the PC port, but running DX12 through a somewhat experimental Vulkan translation layer on Linux probably might also have a role to play. Still, the X080 is a card you can grab for around $100, and it holds up. In a 200 second run, the X080 averaged 87.7 frames per second, with 1% lows at 57.8 frames per second, and 0.1% lows at 53.8 frames per second. On paper, that's strong performance, but the asset and shader hiccups are still there long enough to catch your eye. Up next, I tried out Witcher 3 on high settings, 
with FXAA and then FSR2 enabled. The game started in DX12 mode, and really, who am I to push back? Anyway, I wanted to keep Geralt wandering around spots with lots of foliage and water, because, at least at one point, it was commonly agreed that those assets could be hard on a GPU. Things looked a bit blurry, and there was a lot of fog, and the heavy fog makes me wonder if volumetric fog is a toggleable setting, and if disabling it will increase performance. Hmm. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. With the game as native as it can be, the average FPS was 46.8, 1% lows at 32.8, and the 0.1% lows at 27.4 frames per second. Enabling FSR2 increased frames and frame stability at about the same proportion as native. The average frame rate shot up to exactly 81, 1% low of 56.5 frames per second, and 0.1% lows at 47.4 frames per second. That's pretty decent for a 2019 AAA game, and FSR certainly helped. Up next in this lineup is the finals. I'm not much of an online game player, and I know there were some issues with this title a few weeks back on Linux, but it's what I have installed on my setup, which is running out of drive space. I tested in the training room, and because this is an online shooter, I set visuals to the low preset, the preset you'd likely use if frame rate is a priority. At 1440p, the X080 averaged 97.4 frames per second, with 1% lows at 49.8 frames per second, and 0.1% lows at a pretty decent 40.3 frames per second, <clears throat> making for a pretty stable experience. It's not high maxed out eye candy, but I imagine the X080's performance here is pretty competent for the finals, a DX12 title, especially at 1440p. Next up is Robocop Rogue City. This Unreal Engine 5 game has given me trouble on Intel Arc. Stay out of trouble. Where it just wouldn't start, though with Mesa 25.1 it finally launches. But on the X080 it ran without complaint, and honestly it looks great. At 1440p on the high preset, the native run averaged 58.2 frames per second, with 1% lows at 37.4 frames per second, and 0.1% lows at 17.7 frames per second. That's enough for a solid playthrough, though you might see the occasional hitch. I didn't really notice. Turning on FSR3 pushed the average up to 73.4 frames per second, with 1% lows at 40.9 frames per second, and 0.1% lows at 27.2 frames per second. Unreal Engine 5 games take a lot of heat for running poorly on modest hardware, but even under 60 frames per second, I still think they look fantastic. Maybe I'm not supposed to say that. Maybe I'll have to experience beige for saying that. And last but not least, the Crisis of Modern Video Game Benchmarks, Cyberpunk 2077. I tested it at 1440p on the high preset, first in native DX12, then again with FSR3. In the native run, the X080 averaged 58.5 frames per second, with 1% lows at 30.1 and 0.1% lows at 20.5 frames per second. That's right on the edge of ideally playable, but if you've been following Cyberpunk benchmarks, you know that's actually a respectable result. Turning on FSR3 ramped things up. The average climbed to 69.9 frames per second, with 1% lows at 42.7 and 0.1% lows at 36.6 frames per second. Not only is the frame rate higher, but the lows are tighter, making the game feel much more consistent overall. I tried ray tracing, but it crawled at 15 to 20 frames per second and didn't show proper reflections. Same story as Control, RDNA 2 just wasn't built for it. That's Cyberpunk, and with that, I think it's time to step back and look at the bigger picture of what this card can actually do. So across the board, it seems the Sapphire X080 proved itself. It's basically an RX 6700 with no outputs and a mining past, but on Linux, it's putting in real work. Native can be a borderline in tough games, but with FSR3 or smart settings, it smooths out. And in older or well-optimized titles, it looks great. If you're on the fence about gaming on Linux, maybe grab one of these as a spare card and drop it into an older system. It's a cheap way to see how Linux gaming feels.
At under $100, the XO80 is an e-waste. Really, it's a great way for someone to dip their toes into PC gaming. It's definitely a legit budget GPU for Linux gaming. And next, I want to see how it handles AI, so stay tuned. Until next time.